Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. Hello everybody, welcome to Elite Wine TV. I'm your host Mark Fusco here for another edition of the show. All right, so uh, on to more uh, sample wine. So um, this gentleman, Mark Feinberg, uh, was kind enough to not only send me a wine one time, but send me two wines, and I hadn't even reviewed the first wine yet. So, um, so we have two wines from him, and um, these look like wines that may have been out several years ago. Yeah, I, as far as I know, there's no connection, but I remember when I lived in Chicago before I got into all this, but I was kind of into wine. Uh, I remember going to the uh, local Dominic. Uh, no, I think it was had to go to Jewel for this because I think they were the ones who had the wine. Um, and there was a wine called Origins and they did the exact same thing. Okay, but I'll read you the story. Um, there was more about the red wine than the white wine, at least the information, you know, the email I got. Um, but yeah, we're going to do two wines, um, called locations and these are made by Dave Finney. Now you may know Dave Finney from the prisoner and then he sold that and then Orrin Swift and then he sold that. Um, so he's definitely a well-known winemaker, makes lots of crowd pleasing wines. Um, and, uh, yeah, so let's check it out. So we've got a white wine from New Zealand, Sauvignon Blanc, and we have a, um, this is a blend, not quite... It, it's like combining Rhone and Bordeaux. Um, anyway, so we got, and this is from Texas. So I'm excited about trying both of these. All right, so I'll kind of read the little um, little story here real quick. Uh, just after the 2010 harvest, Dave Finney was at the Charles de Gaulle airport lamenting with a friend on how existing wine regulations were limiting his ability to make some really nice wine. He joked about possibilities, imagining what he could do if there were no rules, what if you could blend across French appellations? What if you could produce a blend that represented France? What if there are no rules? And how fun would it be to travel uh, this country to find great growers with old vines while experiencing the culture and people of this place? Sounds like my trips, um, which are awesome, except I'm not a winemaker, so I'm just like tasting the wine. Uh, after he said the final goodbyes, the taxi pulled curbside and he noticed a very distinctive F sticker on the license plate and he basically had a eureka moment. So what if he takes this idea not only from France, but Italy, Spain, Portugal, great wine is made all over the world. What if he could produce a range of wines across all of the major wine regions? And what if, what if it could be done uh, while having a whole lot of fun and creating a team of some of the best people in each of these countries producing a wine that pays homage to their home, homeland without compromise and without boundaries? Okay, so like I said, idea is an awesome idea but I know I've seen this idea before 2010. Um, so I don't know if Dave contacted Origins or Origins didn't like trademark this stuff or, or what's going on, but um, good concept, right? You know, just, you're gonna be a, I guess a piece of, not necessarily a flying winemaker, but you are, um, and you're gonna inspire some people in all other parts of the great winemaking areas to make kind of a wine that's somewhat representative of the area. I like the idea. All right, so first off, we've got the, uh, I believe these are non, this is non-vintage. I think they're both non-vintage. Um, yeah, um, well, it's called, it says NZ6. So this, and there was nothing in my notes that said anything why it's called that. Um, but I'm going to guess, Well, this is inaugural release, so I don't know what the six means on here. Um, anyways, non-vintage uh, New Zealand Sauvignon Blanc by Locations Wine. Um, this is 100% Sauvignon Blanc, and it's stainless steel fermented with minimal aging time. Um, and yes, uh, they said that the grapes come from the... 
Waihopai Valley, the Southern Valley of Waihopai, which I'll be honest, I actually don't know that valley and I probably should. I'm supposed to be studying to be an advanced sommelier. All right, so let's check it out. Boom. One thing I always make sure, make sure that, so I use that, make sure that your uh, needle is always secure. All right, so let's check it out. Wow, nice fruit on that, like passion fruit, grapefruit, like for days. Even touch a pineapple. Like all, all, everything's super ripe. Not super ripe, but ripe. Oh, uh, 1999 is suggested retail on this. Yeah, definitely got the pyrazines, aka like bell pepper. So you've got the greenness on that, even a little bit of grass. It's got everything it's supposed to have. Good Lord, that's a tasty Sauvignon Blanc for 20 bucks. Yeah. Um, the, the fruit is absolutely off the charts. Um, it, it tastes very ripe, but yeah, it's crisp. Um, it's not flabby. This acid's good. Um, yeah, I mean, that's... really good i can't wait to drink that like in a, in a regular sitting soon well not really soon well it might be soon i mean i haven't had the operation yet i mean it sounds like i can't drink anything from this point until i have my operation so <laughs> i can drink stuff anyway it's really good now i'm going to swap glasses so we can do wine number two irony is i'm using the smaller glass for the reds all right so wine number two Wine number two is Texas. So it is the, is a Texas red wine, uh, also non-vintage. If I, I mean, there was nothing on here about a vintage. I'm gonna double check. Okay, Texas red blend, suggested retail price is $24.99. It says a blend of Grenache, Mavedra, Syrah, Carignan, and assorted Bordeaux varietals, barrel aged and neutral French oak for 10 months prior to release. Um, so this is coming from the High Plains. And Dave worked with, you know, a, a very well-known uh, winemaker here in Texas, Kim McPherson. Um, and he has McPherson Cellars. Uh, and he does amazing job with some wines out there in Lubbock. So um, if you've never had McPherson wines, you should try them. Just saying. All right. So I'm real, super excited about doing this because it's a Texas wine. And I don't review Texas wines a lot, but I've got a whole bunch here to review soon. Uh, from Yano Estacado. They were kind enough to send me wine again. All right. So let's check it out. So I get more, honestly, I get more earthiness than fruit out of this right now. Get some bitterness out of it, but it's kind of a coffee, roasted coffee bitterness. Um, not a fun fact, but a fact, I really don't like coffee. So that's probably why when I get that type of smell, aroma, that I start going, uh, but... I eat tiramisu and it has coffee in it. So about the only way of coffee, the only expression of coffee I actually like. I love the smell of like coffee, coffee, but yeah. It was a touch of meatiness, a touch of, um, not pepper. Um, kind of pepper, but there was a spice, like it just escaped me. Like I was like, ooh, I caught a whiff of that. 
like barbecue smoke, you know, uh, burnt wood, dried cranberry. Leaves, dried leaves. It's it's more earthy than fruity for sure. Like I would almost think this could be New World. -ish. I mean, I'm sorry, Old World ish, but there's a freshness to it that would lead me back to the New World. Hmm. It is a spice explosion in your mouth. Like, it's it's good. Um, <clears throat> it, it's it's kind of like walking into a spice shop. Um, almost kind of like going to Pier 1, you know? Um, but all those spices, all that, like, you know, um, wicker and the wood and the cedar and, 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 and the potpourri and all that kind of stuff rolled into one. Throw in some, you know, throw in some uh, maple bacon and uh, ground, you know, black pepper, um, a little bit of raspberry sauce, a little bit of cranberry sauce. Smoked ribs <clears throat> on the nose there. Didn't mean to totally splash up that. It's good wine. 25 bucks good too. So first three wines of the night. So last week's show, this week's show, Get you some. Now, <clears throat> I don't know how widely available the Texas wine is going to be outside of Texas, um, but if you live in Texas, and I've seen it, this stuff on the shelf somewhat recently, you should buy it. Uh, from these two wines alone, uh, Dave and his team of winemakers in whatever part of the world they're making them from, um, they're, they're definitely onto something. The only thing I don't like is the this, this bottle size. I don't like that. Like, this ball size is not as it's not as fat. It's not so bad, but um, I can't. So I have so I have a wooden wine rack that now I don't use anymore. Like this doesn't fit in there. I don't like that. I don't like this at work. So I don't, I'm, I'm Dave, Dave, and, and everybody. I'm not trying to hate on you specifically. I'm talking about as an industry, I do not like wine bottles this wide. I know you're doing it for whatever the reason is, um, but. For us, at least in the restaurant industry, that have regular wine racks to store your wine, we can't. And so it's, yeah, it's, it's very inconvenient. Um, speaking of weird things too, this happened, and I'm, I'm done with the review. Um, so it has nothing to do with the wine or anything like this. Uh, but, you know the punt here? I was at my favorite wine bar, High Street, a couple weeks ago, and this woman came in, and she literally told the, the bartender that she wanted to decide on her wine based upon how deep the punt was. No lie. I just about fell out of my chair. And to the credit of, of the person helping her, he was like, absolutely, yeah, come on, let's go. Boom, 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 here you go. How's this? Is that good? Cool. Pour for you with a smile. Because you know what? Their motto is hospitality first. And if I was at my work, I would do the same thing. But let's spell that myth. The punt has no bearing on quality. Because if it did, this would be a huge punt from the Frisson. And it's a standard one, okay? You know, this punt is standard. These are standard size punts. You know what the punt helps you do? One, it helps keep the bottle from tipping over. It also helps on the bottling line to move the bottles around because it has something to grip. Um, it has a little bit of stability. It has a little bit of strength to the bottle. That's all it does. It has nothing to do with the wine quality. All right, sorry, soapbox. I really want to talk about that. Anyway, 
get the wines. I know I hate it on the bottle, but hey, get the wines. They're really good. All right, so that's going to do it for this episode. Uh, as always, you can click the links above to friend me up. Again, I'm really not on social media right now, but I'll eventually friend you up or accept your friend request. Um, click the donate button. Again, if you want to know more about why I really need you to donate, go to episode 402. Um, kind of already mentioned it, operation, all stuff. Um, click links below for information about these wines. And um, thank you for stopping by. We'll see everyone again next time.